Hey, what's up guys? Sean Nalawani here of EliteImpactLabs.com. First off, sorry it's been a while since I've uploaded a video here. We've been, uh, or we were, extremely hard at work on our brand new Muscle Amp pre-workout formula, which just launched last week. These types of projects always take uh, a lot more time and effort than uh, you anticipate at the outset. We really wanted to make this uh, very, very high quality product, so a lot of work went into that, and I got a little bit sidetracked, and obviously it's been a while since uh, I've uploaded a video here, but I am gonna resume regular uh, videos several times per week here, and I will do a video later this week giving more information on our pre-workout formula. But today I want to go back to just uploading a regular standard fitness uh, and bodybuilding lesson, and I want to answer the question of whether it is better to do cardio before or after your weight training session. So is one time better than the other? Should you avoid either one, and is there a better time altogether? So let's take a quick look at each situation. The first is doing cardio before weights. Now in any weight training program where the goal is to optimize body composition by maintaining or increasing lean mass and by losing body fat, resistance training should always be treated as your number one priority. Intense weight training is the core stimulus that causes the body to build and maintain lean muscle and you should always be entering every workout with 100% of your energy and focus still in the tank. And this is especially important for those whose primary goal is to gain muscle as the entire basis for stimulating continued muscle growth is by consistently increasing the amount of weight you can lift on all of your exercises over time. If you're entering your weight training workout already pre-fatigued from a full cardio session, you'll definitely be compromising your strength, your energy, and the amount of resulting muscular overload that you can achieve. A pre-workout cardio session is going to increase muscular fatigue, it's going to raise blood acidity, which raises hydrogen ion circulation and further decreases performance, and it's gonna also lower your mental focus as well. The simultaneous increase in muscular fatigue and the decline in mental focus will also increase your chances for injury as well. So the bottom line here is, whether you're trying to build muscle or burn fat, scrap the pre-workout cardio and save it for another time. The second time is doing your cardio after weights. Now, many people perform their cardio immediately after weights under the false assumption that they'll end up burning more total body fat at this time. And the idea here is that because muscle glycogen levels have been drained as a result of the workout, more fat will be broken down and burned during the cardio session. The reality is that weight training workouts use up far less glycogen than most people think. Even a highly exhaustive session will typically only lower overall glycogen levels by around 30 or 40%, leaving plenty available for the post-workout cardio session. The human body is a very complex and dynamic machine, and trying to manipulate the type of fuel that is burned during cardio, whether it's fat or carbohydrates, is quite honestly a waste of your time and your effort. So we know that post-workout cardio is not going to increase fat loss, but does that mean that it's bad? All in all, post-workout cardio is a viable strategy as long as you have the necessary mental focus and muscular energy to complete the session with a sufficient level of intensity. If you do wanna perform your cardio post-workout in order to keep your training as time efficient as possible, just try to structure the session using some basic common sense. So for example, if you're doing a high intensity leg workout, then you'd probably be best to do a shorter duration cardio session that utilizes some upper body movements, such as body weight intervals, uh, because a high intensity leg workout followed by 45 minutes of jogging is obviously not gonna be ideal. Or if you're training smaller muscle groups like your arms or your calves or your abs, then any form of cardio is probably gonna be fine, whether it be longer duration or shorter duration. Or if your weight training workout has already lasted an hour and a half, then you'd wanna to stick to a brief high intensity cardio workout to conserve energy and keep things more time efficient. Or if you've just trained chest or your back, and you still have sufficient energy left, then just go with whatever form of cardio you prefer, et cetera, et cetera. There's no single definitive protocol that will apply to everyone in every situation, but the bottom line is to lay out your weight training and your cardio combination in a way that allows you to be as time efficient as possible and allows you to execute the session with the necessary focus and intensity to get the best workout possible. 
So to briefly sum up what we just covered, number one, avoid pre-workout cardio altogether as it will increase muscular fatigue, decrease mental focus, and compromise the effectiveness of your weight training session. And number two, if you wanna perform your cardio post-workout, just make sure to structure the session in a way that allows you to complete both portions, the weight training and the cardio, in a time efficient manner and with uh, sufficient intensity. Of course, you can avoid all these complications altogether by simply separating your weight training and your cardio into different sessions altogether. That way, you'll always enter each session with 100% of your energy and your focus intact. So this could mean performing weight training uh, and cardio on altogether separate days, performing cardio in the morning and weight training in the evening, or performing weight training in the morning and cardio in the evening. As with most bodybuilding and fitness issues, the uh, answers are rarely ever black and white, and it's often about simply finding the right balance that works for you based on your body, your goals, and your weekly schedule. So I hope you found the information in this video lesson useful today. If you did enjoy the video, as always, please make sure to hit the like button, leave a comment, and subscribe to stay up to date on future video lessons. Also make sure to grab your free 28-day mass building plan using the link in the description box below. That includes a free workout plan, meal plan, and supplement guide, which you can grab over on EliteImpactLabs.com. And make sure to join the Elite Impact Labs Facebook page for daily articles, videos, tips, and bodybuilding supplement giveaways. Thanks again for watching this video lesson, and I'll talk Talk to you again soon with more free tips.